what's up everybody welcome to cowboy tv do you have 100 percent cpu utilization in pubg if so i got the fix for you guys now this applies to pubg but could apply to other games as well i'm gonna do something a little different this time i'm gonna give you the fix real quick how i solve this and then the second part of the video is going to be me talking about why it was so hard to diagnose this problem and figure out what was going on. If you were having your CPU 100% maxed out by a program, in my case it was PUBG, obviously the first thing you, you would think is, wow, I need to upgrade my CPU. Okay, but I'm going to save that for the second part of the video, we'll talk about that. What can you do if there are no upgrades available? All right. So while PUBG is running, we're going to control alt delete. We're going to go to the task manager. Once it opens up, you can see right here, we're going to go down to details. Right here, TSL game. We're going to right click and go to set priority. And right here, you can change the default is normal. You can change the priority to below normal or to low to help take some of that load off of your CPU. But anyway, that's the first step. You can do that. The more frames you get, the more work you're asking your CPU to do every second. So that got me thinking that the second option would be to lower my frame rate in the game. I know this is not ideal for a shooter, believe me, but like the game was totally unplayable for me. And so this is the only way I was able to get it actually going. But you just come in here to the graphic options, the basic options, and lower it down to 75 frames. I was playing around with it, 75, 80, 85, and I was able to take some of the load off my CPU by doing the combination of these two things. I went from being maxed out 100 to maybe in the low 90s, low mid 90s. So it wasn't like a dramatic improvement, but it did make the game actually playable for me it went from like freezing up locking up all the time which I'm going to show you in a minute exactly what was happening but anyway this is the first part of the video do these two things you can take some of the load off your CPU this absolutely worked for me possibly enabling vsync which uh, limits your FPS to 60 may give you the same results as manually lowering your FPS did not test it with vsync can't confirm that it actually works but the theory makes sense so that's the fix. Thank you if that's what you're here for. I hope this works. Please let me know if this works for you. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly why this was so hard for me to figure out what was going on. Here is what I was experiencing in PUBG. It almost always happened while we were parachuting. Uh, usually at the beginning of the game it would be bad. Like right here you can see it's locked up. And as the game you know, went on, it would usually come out of it. Let's see, I was locked up for like five or six seconds solid, and it's locking up, it's locking up. This is what was happening to me, and it was so frustrating because I built this particular computer specifically to play PUBG. It was maybe like five years ago. It's a 7th gen i5 7600K, and I have over 2,000 hours in the game on this computer, so it was like unbelievably frustrating what was going on and I never thought it could be my CPU after having run it with no issues for so long. Well, you see right here, it's still, it's, lo it's locking up, it's locking up, it's terrible. And here we go. This is what made it the most confusing thing ever. This is the error message I'm getting, network lag detected. And I guess what was happening is my CPU my CPU is like hard locked. It's absolutely pushed to the max and it's shutting down. It's not letting my computer do anything, including the ethernet card. So PUBG is thinking, you know, I'm unplugged from the internet. So I thought this is an, I an issue I'm having with Comcast or something, you know, like this is a network problem. I'm trying all these things. I'm changing DNS settings, I'm updating you know, my onboard Ethernet drivers, I'm, I've watched all these tutorials and did every stupid thing that I could find to try to fix network lag in PUBG. I had, we have Comcast cable internet here, 
and I did not trust Comcast. We'd had some weird issues with them. So I had AT&T come out and install DSL in our house so I could try a different, a separate internet connection to try to, you know, eliminate Comcast as being the source of the problem. I mean, it cost me $150 to have a DSL installed. Uh, so I just said, fuck it, and I went for it. And it only took one day of trying to play on the DSL to realize that was not the problem. And this is the, I was getting this very same issue. So I thought, well, that's great. There goes money down the drain. I, I literally have two separate internet connections at my house right now. That's how badly I wanted to figure out this issue. After talking with a friend of mine, he had me start paying attention to the resource monitor while I was running the game, and then that's when I realized 100% CPU was the problem. So, like I talked about in the beginning, the obvious fix to that is to upgrade your CPU. I did the tweaks, and like I talked about earlier in this video, and I got results, and the game actually became playable. It wasn't locking up like this. You know, very once in a while, I would get network lag detected, usually while we're parachuting, while we're dropping in. Before I did th those fixes, this shit was happening all the time. It was so frustrating. But once I narrowed it down to the CPU, I started to think about what kind of upgrade options are available for me. And I'm looking at my motherboard manual, and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like, maybe I can upgrade to an 8th gen chip. Well, my motherboard only supports 6th and 7th generation Intels. I've got the 7600K, which is basically the best of the i5s. So that only leaves me two options for upgrades. i7, the 7700, and the 7700K. So I got on handy dandy Amazon and started pricing these out. Now you can see i7-7700, 4 core, brand new in the box right here is $205, right? But I started looking at this one, a, a 7700 that is renewed, factory renewed by Amazon. It's $131. You can see I bought one earlier this month. It cost me about $130-ish for the chip and a little tube of thermal paste. And uh, I just said, I've got to know. Like, I've got to know that this is the cause of my problem. So, for 130 bucks, I was willing to say fuck it, you know? <laughs> In the name of making content or, you know, just finding out, I guess. So, anyway, I ordered this processor. I kept reading about renewed, renewed, renewed. And, you know, it, it, you can return it if it doesn't work. 90-day return policy, like any other item. It's fully guaranteed by Amazon to work like a new processor. That's pretty sweet and would save you, you know, 70 bucks. You're thinking about an upgrade or, you know, even GPUs you can get renewed. And I think I'm going to probably buy a renewed one next time just to see if it works. I went looking at userbenchmark.com, my old nemesis. This website is the reason why I bought the i5 in the first place. Now see, look at these numbers right here. i5 is ranked 74 and this thing is ranked 60. The i5 is incredibly cheaper, it says, to buy a brand new one, which could be true. I, I didn't price out the, the i5 that I already had. They have the same performance in gaming, which that tracks because I bought the i5. My kid had an, a 7th gen i7, the 7700K, and it was a little more expensive. And I look at these, some of these numbers and it's like, well, they're equal when it comes to gaming. Why spend more? All I really am worried about is gaming, right? The i5 is basically better in all these categories. My whole theory was if I had better multi-core performance, I'm not going to be maxed out trying to run PUBG. I have heard for years, people say that multi-core performance does not affect gaming. That's why I bought the i5 in the first place, okay? But I guess what I proved by doing this comparison is your multi-core performance absolutely does affect gaming. Even though I'm giving up, you know, your single core clock speed a little bit, now I can actually run the game. My CPU is only being utilized like 60% when I'm running PUBG. 
and I'm not skipping. I'm not having any lag issues anymore. And the game is running beautifully smooth. And all I did was buy one of these cheap on Amazon, swap it in there. That's the only thing that I changed. And I can absolutely run the game beautiful. If you're having an issue similar to this, maybe you have an i5 and you can upgrade to an i7, you might think about doing it because I was going to build an entirely new computer and basically now I can put that off for a little while. I, I, can, I can play the game that I'm trying to play. It runs great. It cost me $131 you know, to fix. Yeah, that's I made this video because people that are telling you multi-core performance does not affect gaming, they are wrong. It absolutely does. Uh, keep that in mind when you're building a system. More cores seem to be better. So anyway, if you watched all this, I appreciate it. Me just rambling, but you have to understand, it took me a year of tinkering on and off to finally figure out what the hell was going on and figure out a way to, a way to fix it. If you apply the tweaks at the beginning of the video, it's absolutely going to help take some of the load off your CPU. But, you know, reducing your FPS to make the game run better is not ideal. So if there's an upgrade, I don't know what the AMD equivalent to this would be, but if, if you can upgrade your processor and you can do it on the cheap, it might be worth thinking about. Anyway, thank you all for watching very much. I appreciate it. Leave me a comment if this video helps you at all. And that's it for me, guys. Have a good one.